Hey YouTube, Aaron Robbins here with another Magicka Voxel demonstration slash tutorial and today we're going to recreate the Unihorse character from Hipster Whale's Crossy Roads. One of my favorite characters in the game. I thought it'd be fun to show my workflow and uh, how I go about modeling and creating game assets and taking those into Unity uh, with something we're all familiar with. So I'm here in Magic of Voxel, and the first thing that you want to do is set, as, is set the scale. Even when you're not recreating something, like when we're making Unihorse, the, set, the scale has kind of already been set for us. That is how big um, the model is, or how what level of resolution or detail it is. Um, that's already been set for us, but if this is your own project, your own original model or something you're, you're kind of trying to do from your head or something, you want to know sort of how big... Um, you're working or you'll get something called scale creep where you just keep adding more and more detail So for example just to illustrate that point um, if we were going to populate a scene with uh, people um, We could say that this is actually a, a person and that's our scale for this model a person is one pixel high and So we could just make you know some people and put a line of them here And you're saying well those don't look like people those look like white dots and they are But then I could put like a black one next to them like that and say that this is Darth Vader with stormtroopers. And if I put other stuff in here, there was a TIE fighter that was, you know, um, bigger, you know, than than these guys. All of a sudden, we would, you know, the illusion of what these things were would come into play, and and our scale would be fine. But that's what you want to determine. Are you are you making stormtroopers and uh, Darth Vader like as realistic as you can, or you know, what level of detail and scale you're going for? So set that first. So with Unihurst, that scale has already been set for us. So let's take a look at that. So my next step would be to kind of find some reference footage to look at to get an idea of what these, this thing should look like. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out my scene. We'll head over to the trusty old internet. And I found some pictures of Unihurst because he is quite a popular character. So when you're remodeling or when you're sort of looking at reference, reference footage, even when you're looking at reference footage of stuff that wasn't originally created as voxel art, like an airplane or something like that, you're kind of trying to determine what the what the smallest level of detail is that you're going to create. Like, in, in another way of saying that would be, like, where is one voxel? What, what thing on here represents one voxel that I can use to start figuring out proportion? And so for me, I looked around, and the first thing I saw was the leg. And I said, well, the leg's one voxel. It's one, two, three, four, five high. And of course, that broke down as soon as you get up here, because if the leg is, if, if this is one voxel, then this is one, two, so this neck area is too wide. And when I get up here, if I think this is too wide, and this is one voxel here, there's actually no way to create this detail of the inner ear here, and there's no way to create this eye part here. This would be one voxel, and I couldn't put another one inside of it. So I know that the neck is not one, or just two voxels wide, and I know that the eye is not one voxel wide, and therefore I know this, this can't be one. This has to be something like two by two. So that's what you're doing first, is you're trying to find the, the smallest area of detail where you think there's a voxel and counting from there. And this, this model has a couple of great giveaways. Um, one is the inner ear here where I know this is one voxel, and so I know the head is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide. The neck is how many wide? Well, I know it's one here and then two on either side, and this is probably one here, so it's one, two, three, four, five wide. Um, there's some great ones with the nostrils, and so I know there's one on either one on this side, the nostril, then two, then one, so I can count the width of the nose, which is one, two, three, four, five, it's six. Um, you can use the teeth here and um, try to figure out that this is this is probably a voxel colored here, and two, so this is probably two, so it's one, two, three, four, maybe five. There will definitely be times where you don't know, and you got to work it out in the model. There. The other giveaways on Unihorus are the one voxel sort of flip on the main hair and the one voxel flip on the tail hair. Um, whatever the tail hair on a horse is called. All right, so let's go in and start modeling uh, Unihorus. I don't know if I'm going to talk over this. Probably not. I'll probably just do it. Um, and then we'll bring it into Unity and add the trail render and particle effects and make him jump, and that'll be good for today. All right.
Okay, so now we are done modeling Unihorse and we feel pretty good about that. We are going to go ahead and rename uh, this to just Unihorse. Looks good. And then we're going to go to File and then Export. And we're going to export an OBJ file because we're going to bring this into Unity. And we have one already in here, but that's okay. We'll overwrite it and hit uh, Replace. We'll go into Unity, and I have a scene already created with him uh, in there. I'll show you how I brought him uh, in in just a second. Uh, but I have also just a green road here that I created in Magic Voxel and brought that in. And so what we did was we just brought our model, our Unihorse model in, which is this guy right here. And we set the scale factor to 0.1 because Magic of Voxel models come into Unity um, fairly large um, by default. So 0.1 is the scale, and you just hit 0.1, and then you hit Apply down here and it sets the right scale for you. You can drag as many unihorses in there as you want now. Mm, you don't want to do that though. Next thing we did was um, just really quickly added a script to him called Unihorse, which controls how far forward he moves and how far uh, he jumps and how long that takes. Really the worst way, uh, I did it the quickest way you possibly could uh, instead of the best way you possibly could because this isn't going any further than this video. Um, and then we attached, we parented a just an empty game object. I renamed that game object effects, and I parented that to the uh, Unihorse, and I gave it a trail renderer, and I gave it a particle system. And so that when we hit uh, play, and we hit the space bar on the uh, keyboard, our Unihorse jumps across uh, the screen. So if you're starting from a blank scene, um, we'll go just new scene, and we can go ahead and get rid of all this stuff like that. You go ahead and just say uh, import new asset. And we will go to the uh, voxel folder and find our Unihorse project. And we are going to import um, the object here. And it gave us this Unihorse head model, which I need to uh, rename to just Unihorse. I'll drag him in the scene and you can see he's huge and that's why we go to the actual imported model and go to the scale factor and set that to 0.1 and hit apply. Now he's a little more uh, in scale of the, the game world, but he does not have a material attached to him. Um, so we go, this materials folder was brought in for us and we have this default material. Um, which is not helpful at all because it does not have the texture on it. And so we'll go ahead and select import new asset and do the exact same thing. It would have been a lot quicker had I just uh, used the finder window or the Windows Explorer window or whatever you call it to drag in both things at the same time. But um, we'll do it this way. So this Unihorse PNG directly relates to the palette file in Magic of Voxel when you're in Magic of Voxel and you hit save uh, to save out your palette. When you export it as an object it does this part for you automatically but let's say you didn't or you had multiple color palettes for the same model that you were going to swap. We're going to do that in an upcoming video. Um, this is the exact same type of file that you're looking for here. This Unihorse.png file which is a 1 by 256 pixel um, file. So in Unity we are uh, going to just bring that guy in there and hit import and then we'll select the default material and rename it to Unihorse Mat because we like to name things and then we're going to drag and drop the Unihorse head uh, PNG I should na rename this too to uh, Unihorse Text for texture, I honestly never name things that way, but I felt like, hey, let's go for it. And we're going to drag it right up here into the albedo, albedo uh, thing and uh, property right there. Or you could conversely, alternatively, click on this little target icon here and select the uh, Unihorse texture from here. If I wanted to make him, um, this is the texture palette exported from Magic of Voxel for this uh, snowy road version of the road. Um, you can see I've got other ones in here because I use this little project for a lot of things. Um, but we want the horse one. We'll have him look like the horse. And there you go. You have your horse. The only other thing I did was um, add a script to him that I will show you uh, now. And we'll have him move uh, two and up five. And we'll have that take 0.18 seconds. Um, that should actually work other than the fact that he does not have the trail render stuff 
Where are you going, Unihorse? Come back. Um, the trail renderer stuff, which is probably won't touch on the particle systems because it would take me another 10 minutes to, the particle systems are very easy to set up, but you can spend hours just like massaging all the little details. Ah, I can't believe I just said massaging, terrible. So that is a uh, quick glimpse of, oh, you wanted to see the, the thing. I'm hesitant to show you because this is not the way you would do this in production, but it was just quick. So I just defined up public variables for how far he's going to move forward in X and uh, Y, uh, a tween time, and I wanted to capture his start position in Y, or how uh, high he was. And then I set that in the start method, which Unity calls when the uh, scene is loaded after it calls on awake and then on enable, it calls start. And so I just grabbed the start position really quickly. And then in the update method, check to see if the user was pressing down on the spacebar key. And if the model wasn't currently in an animation or wasn't currently tweeting, then we go ahead and let the player uh, move the model. And I'm using the free and excellent lean tween engine to do that. But again, this is a quick and dirty way to do it. There are lots and lots of other ways to do that using Unity's, or C Sharp probably more appropriately, uh, lerping features. Um, you could have used physics to do it and applied force, which I don't think is necessarily a great way to do it for this particular game. Um, but just a quick and dirty example. But that is a just general workflow for modeling and importing the unity and starting to script. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos about Magic of Oxel. Unity.